Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So a few days ago on the Bright Lifers accountability call, which happens every morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 a.m. Pacific Time, um, I was talking with Jerry McDowell, who is a longtime Bright Lifer from New Mexico. She's been in her right size body now for years, um, since I think at least 2017, maybe sooner. Um, and she was talking about how with Bright Line Eating, she is really moving past the food and the weight and all that and moving into her purpose in life. And she's taking a training course in Pilates that's really exciting to her. And her life is just opening up. And I ended up bringing up something that on that call I said, I think this is gonna be the topic of the weekly vlog. Um, because I, I know I've talked about this somewhere before, but I don't honestly remember where. And I just think it's a really important concept and it relates in particular to the feeling of constraint versus freedom in one's life. And I tend to think of it, especially in terms of socializing, moving through the world, like traveling, celebrations, um, and just, uh, yeah, the feeling of being able to move freely and what I told her and what I want to share with you is that solid bright line eating recovery has an hourglass shape to it. Um, when you are not yet in bright line eating, your freedoms in terms of what and when to eat are unlimited. Like you're just eating freely. You're eating what you want when you want. And there is a certain um, freedom that goes along with that, right? Like showing up to someone's house and not worrying what they're serving and just eating whatever and going to the movies and eating whatever and uh, traveling and being excited because you'll get to eat all the food that's there and eat whatever. And um, for a lot of us, food is really interwoven in our sense of enjoyment and connection and socializing and uh, partaking of events and celebrations uh, and get togethers. And then we start Bright Line Eating and the hourglass begins. Our sense typically of the world starts to narrow. And in many cases, that feeling of narrowing is almost intolerable. Like it feels like a death sense. It feels like the gates of the jail cell slamming shut and we can feel like we will never be let out of jail. And um, some of us experience our world getting so small and narrow that we feel cut off, isolated, desolate, and um, not, we're afraid, not free to move around the world, afraid to eat in restaurants. Um, sort of despairing that going over to someone's house to socialize doesn't even feel worth it because they'll all be eating and drinking and we won't be partaking. And um, the social issue of calling ahead or do I eat first or it, it feels um, so constrained that um, it's almost as if life is lived just through this tiny little sliver of an opening. And my suspicion is that for many people, they leave Bright Line Eating at that point, or they conclude that, um, yeah, there's just that it's not worth it, you know, that it, it's too horrible an existence and the trade off is too extreme. That, yeah, they'd love to have their health issues cleared up, and yeah, they'd love to not be obsessed about sugar all the time, and yeah, they'd love to lose their weight and live in a right-sized body, but not at that price. And so what I wanna share with you that Jerry and I were talking about is that life opens back up. Like if you work a strong program and you allow um, the natural way 
of recovery to take its course, what happens is you start to feel more and more free where um, restaurants, as you practice in them, become good again. Like you get a fair number of restaurants in your local area that you're used to eating in, that you you know you can get a bright line meal, you go there a few times, you like what they serve, it's yummy, you start to look forward to it. And suddenly the idea of eating out is sort of back on the table and, and in a way that feels gratifying again. Um, and with that practice in your home environment, you find yourself traveling and just noticing, oh, I can eat out there too. And you go on a few trips and you find, oh, this isn't bad. Like I typically, you know, um, go to a grocery store or get breakfast foods and I weigh and measure my breakfast in my, um, hotel room or in my whatever, Airbnb, and then I can eat out for lunch and I can eat out for dinner or I can pack my lunch and then eat out for dinner. You start to get a rhythm with these things. It takes time though to get some of those experiences under your belt. Often the first ones are scary and the first ones are sort of tentative, um, but then the world starts to open up. And um, if you stick with it, it opens all the way back up and then you're in a right sized body which is even better with lots of experience under your belt socializing with people and it's fine so this past weekend i went to toronto with a group of friends there were six of us and we piled into this guy's suburban and we drove from rochester over to toronto and we stayed in an airbnb for two days uh three days two nights uh we did it, there was a, it was a workshop that we were participating in and we saw hamilton one of those nights which was amazing and we laughed so much and they were eating and they were drinking every single one of them drank alcohol except me and um you know they all ate foods i don't eat funny enough they all know me and a couple of them are now sort of doing bright line eating um ish <laughs> you know i keep my eyes on my own plate um but you know they were drinking so they're not you know fully on board but um it was fine i had so much fun and at no point before that trip embarking on that trip on the trip coming home from that trip, did I feel any anxiety about, oh no, what am I gonna do? The socializing I'm not really a part of, uh, what am I gonna eat? Um, there was none of that, none of that. I just left, excited to go, I navigated fine, and I came home. And that's what it's like when the hourglass opens all the way back up and you have enough practice under your belt living in the world as a bright liner that, um, you're good again. You're good again. Um, sometimes people post like, what do you do on birthdays and, you know, um, occasions or whatever. And I just sort of think same thing everybody else does. I go out to a celebratory dinner and like, you know, I'm just ordering a protein, a salad, a vegetable, you know, um, but restaurants always make things a little sexier than I would at home. And it always feels a little extra somehow, just the way it used to. Um, it's just that, I'm bright now and I'm living in a right sized body. It opens all the way back up. So uh, this weekly vlog is meant as a message of hope. If you're embarking on bright line eating and you're feeling the constraint, you're feeling the narrowing and you're thinking, I couldn't live in a world where social situations feel this doomed and small and scary and deprived. Um, I want you to know that if you stick with your bright lines, it will not always feel that way. It will open back up and you will again experience the warmth and the cheer and the camaraderie and the closeness that you used to feel in those social situations when you were eating and drinking with abandon. It turns out that those good feelings don't require eating and drinking with abandon. They don't. They don't, you should have seen me laughing in Toronto. Oh my gosh, we had so much fun. <sighs> so have hope, have hope, have hope. Stick it out, stick it out, stick it out. I love you. And that's the weekly vlog.